to you by Suppose Stocking, the one and only for sheer fashion support. Remember, it has to say Suppose to be Suppose. And now, let's all play What's My Line? panel. First, the delightful star of stage, screen, and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now a young man who is one of the stars of a play that is opening this week on Broadway called The Apple Tree. I understand he plays the devil, the most enticing fellow around, Mr. Larry Blyden. Thank you. And on my left, the witty and glamorous syndicated columnist who is gorgeous in gold or any other color, Miss Susie Knickerbocker. And next, that man that's been buzzing all around the country, lecturing and here at home, publishing his fool head off, Bennett Sir. <laughs> Here's a man who's made a fabulous career in television by simply saying in 50 words what you and I would say in two or three. John Charles Day. <laughs> Susie and uh, Larry Blyden, it's nice to have you with us. Nice if I could say as much about Bennett, but I <laughs> having a little trouble, having a little trouble. Uh, we have some very interesting occupations tonight. I'm having a little trouble with a clock here. Don't mind me. I'll get it straightened out in a second, and then all will be well. There. Now she works fine. The clock is very necessary, because otherwise I can't time Bennett when he's using those three words that uh, don't say very much. But uh, he usually, I must say, does get pretty close to... Uh, the occupations that we present, except tonight, I think he's going to have some trouble. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program. But right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Marie France Gervais. Is that right? Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Gervais. Yes. And where are you from? Uh, Paris, France. From Paris, France. Yes. Wonderful. Well, I've warned the panel we were playing some tricks tonight, so I think this is a good way to start things. Miss Gervais, may I present the panel? And now, if you'll join me over here, please, ma'am. We will let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Uh, we will tell you, panel, panel that uh, Miss uh, Gervais is uh, salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin things with uh, Bennett, sir. Miss Gervais, just to polish off two obvious fields, have you anything to do with either the field of fashion or the field of entertainment? No. One down and nine to go. Arlene? Miss Gervais, is your service one that I could use? Certainly. Uh, would I come to you if I wanted this service? Yes. Um, would you in any way instruct me? In a way, yes. Uh, would you ever touch me? No. Two down and eight to go. Larry Blyden. Uh, is your service in any way connected with a governmental function? No. Three down and seven to go. Susie Knickerbocker. We established that we would come to you, or I could come to you, Arlene could come to you for this service. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But you do not touch. You would not touch me if I came to you for the service. Yeah, no. that's been determined that would you would you, not. Would you talk to me? Yes. Would I learn from you? I hope so. 
Then you would teach me how to do something. Yes. Would this something that you've taught me be something mental? Yes. Uh, not, not entirely. It would, let's say that its principal application would have to do with the um, processes of thought. Uh, it would be a counseling that it would necessarily teach you something specifically it would depend pretty much on what degree of retentiveness you wanted to have about the particular kind of information you were getting. But, uh, <laughs> see? Yes. See I mean? oh, so, yes, I do. <laughs> well, your accent is so very good. Do you perhaps teach a language? No. Four down and six to go, bet it, sir. Miss Yavay, do you work for a profit-making organization? I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Do you work for a profit-making organization? You do. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're not making much profit. <laughs> well, I thought, that, I think probably this was the trouble. I don't think Miss Yavay is necessarily aware of the profit-loss sheet of the... But she, by our terms of reference, she definitely works for a profit-making organization. Ms. Gervais, in the course of your teaching the people for whom you're performing a service, do you do anything physical? No. Nope. And that's five down and five to go. I would like to note again that while I said there was an element, certainly, of information here which could be accepted as teaching, it would depend on the degree of retentiveness which you yourself decided to have at the time that the information was imparted. So don't be misled. Ms. Gervais, do you have anything to do with figures, uh, numerical figures, not shapes? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Blyden. Is it safe to assume that this uh, function that you perform can be performed for French people as well as people who are tourists? Yes. Uh, is it, in fact, performed for both equally? Equally, yes. Very good word, that equally. That makes it seven down and three to go, Miss Nicobar. Then is it perhaps performed more for tourists visiting America? No. That <laughs> makes it eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Gervais, is, have you got anything to do with either food or drink? No. Nine. Not specifically. <laughs> no. Nine down and one to go, Arlene Francis. If you worked in a restaurant. Miss Gervais, if I were traveling in France, would I contact you in order to find places to tour or see? No. That is ten down, and I believe there are no more to go. That's too bad. I told you we'd be up to tricks tonight. This is going to be hard for you to believe, but Miss Gervais is a lawyer. Miss Gervais is a lawyer who took her degree at the University of Paris and is so good at law that she's presently here and expects to be in New York for a year where she gives counsel on French law as it applies to the international uh, part of the, of the firm with uh, which she is presently engaged. And I must say that uh, I've never seen the law look so good. <laughs> We had a very beautiful French lady lawyer on years ago, mm -hmm. Micheline. We I were just talking right. about that, yeah. Micheline Lerner. She did very well for herself. Now, yeah, I hope this will inspire a, a lot of our young ladies to go to law, because I think it's a great career for, for uh, the distaff side. You know, women, women very often... It would inspire a lot of young men to go into law. <laughs> <laughs> it would inspire a lot of young men, and then we'd have enough lawyers. But I think it's a great career for a woman, because while there are complaints about prejudice against women in most careers, Literally, the law is one where if you have the abilities, you almost inevitably will, will reach your goals, and it's a great career for you. She's almost pretty enough to be against the law. I think that's true. <laughs> well, we'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. And now, let's meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Jerry? Oh, is that right, sir? All right. Mr. Houck, where are you from? Here, South Dakota. 
Here's South Dakota, yes. capital, right? Yes. Hey, I remembered that all the way from high school. One of the tough ones to remember, too, if I may say so. Mr. Houck, may I uh, introduce our panel? Now, will you join me over here, sir, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. these all back where they belong, and I will tell you that uh, Mr. Houck is self-employed and deals in a product, and let's begin things with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Houck, is it a useful product? I think so. Um, is it a product that I might own? Yes. Uh, well, now let me say, uh, I take it you ask that question in the context that there would be a possibility that you individually might own this product. Is that Why right? Why not? Huh? Why not? Okay, that's one down and nine again. I couldn't what possibly I own it? I don't think so, no. You see ought to see again. some of the things I have around the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be glad to give you a yes, but if we gave you a yes, it would really right, pull you way off yes, the road, yeah. Arlene. Okay, that's one down and nine to go, Mr. Blyden. Does this product tend to be used by uh, men more than women? I wouldn't say so. No, I don't, I don't think we could say that, you know. I think it, it could be, Larry, but it would be a, a, a matter of, of a research which is not available. That's two down at eight to go, Miss Pickerbocker. Um, the, the size of this product, is it as big as the desk where you're sitting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it have any movable parts? Yes. <laughs> I wish I knew what I were talking about. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> is it, um, is it um, part metal? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hauk, has uh, your product ever been or is it now alive? Yes. Is it alive at the time you are dealing with it? Yes. Is it an animal? Yes. Is it a four-legged animal? Yes. Is it an animal that might sometimes be domesticated? No. No? Mm, yeah, I would think, if with your permission, we would agree that in, in reference factors which would be identical or similar, we would describe it as domesticated, yes. Could this animal, would this animal sometimes be found in a zoo as well as being domesticated occasionally? Yes. Is it any member of the bear family? No. I can hardly bear this. That's <laughs> four down and six to go, Miss Francis. I was on the trail. <laughs> Is it an animal whose fur is sometimes used by ladies? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, uh, you say it's, it's larger than the desk. Is it a, um, is it a uh, animal that is found in the jungle? No. No, no jungles. Five down and five to go, Mr. Blight. Is this uh, animal in the cattle family? Yes. Uh, is this animal connected in any way with the history of this country? Yes. Does it have anything to do with buffalo or bison? Yes. Are you uh, uh, a buffalo. Uh, <laughs> buffalo herder? <laughs> <laughs> I got to throw these all over. That's very oh good. Boy. In fact, you're all to be congratulated. We thought this would stand you in your head uh, so that you're not buffaloed any longer. Uh, Mr. Houck raises buffalo. <laughs> they own the largest private buffalo herd in the United States, 1,200 head, uh, under Triple U Enterprises with his brother and his dad, and they raise it f for um, meat, as you do with steers, you know. Really? I'm misled. Is there, a, is there a buffalo fur, a coat, oh, a yes. buffalo? Buffalo. Yeah, when I was out on the plains as a boy with Bennett, we used to go out and get the buffalo and <laughs> I'd eat buffalo the meat. Buffalo hide, but I didn't know it was ever called a fur. Oh, well, it's, it's fur. Yeah, buffalo. Don't you remember the old buffalo hunters that always had the coats with but the... But they're like suede, aren't they? Oh, no, they'd have it with the the hair on, and you'd wear the whole business. Understand they didn't cure them very well, and they were left alone, pretty much, but uh, <laughs> they wore them. Is that not right, sir? <laughs> that is right. Thank you very much. We didn't stick them, but we gave them a little trouble anyway. Mm -hmm. nice another contestant for you in just a moment, 
after this word. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know, the panel is blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel, as you know, a different form of questioning this time. One question in turn, moving clockwise. And we will begin things with uh, Susie Knickerbock. Are you a part of the entertainment industry? Yes. Ooh. Mr. Surf? Do you sometimes appear on other pages as well as the entertainment pages? Has your name appeared in other pages as well as entertainment pages in recent months? Yes. Arlene? Would the other pages be sport pages? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Blyden. Do you appear in films mostly? Mm. Yes. Miss Knickerbocker? I'm going to guess. Mm hmm. George Hamilton? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I figured when Bennett asked, asked the question that we probably weren't getting away with anything because you're beginning to film the Jack of Diamonds That's right, right yeah. here in New York. There's a good chance to start my accents. I play about five or, diff five or six different accents in the picture, and you had to guess it. Yes, right. I well, now, which, well, you, you let's have some of the short. accents. Well, I play a Frenchman a part of the time, and an Italian, and a German, an Englishman. So well, give, it, give us the Germanischer job now. Well, I, I, I have the accent like this, I speak like this, I, I am the, the ju jewel thief by working here. Uh, <laughs> oh, George Hamilton. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I tell you, George, that's... Um, it doesn't seem to fool him, though. Let's you know? try French. Well, uh, French, I started out with uh, perhaps a little, uh, how do you say, French, working by Susie Knickerbocker, Aline Mele. Hey, wonderful. <laughs> say Susie Knickerbocker in Italian. Susie Nickerbocker. <laughs> well, I, I must say, I'm not trying to paint any lilies, but we have been working, you know, with might and main, principally, I must, must add, uh, inspired by the mayoralty of the city, to um, draw some more of the production of, of um, the movies to New York. Well, it's a, uh, it it's is a, growing, isn't it? It is growing. It's, this is the first, I believe, German production that will be filmed here and Paris and in Germany. And... Uh, I, I think it'll be a, an interesting idea for the Europeans to make some of the films over here rather than we always having to go over there to make the films, so we start pretty soon. Is it fair to ask you, if, since you're shooting here and in, in France and in Germany, what uh, percentage of the picture is, is uh, associated with each locale? Is it pretty much divided up? Actually, I think the, the jewel thief makes his, uh, his uh, uh, robberies in all three places, but actually, uh, being a German picture, we spent two months in Munich, uh -huh. so we film it there. That's tough. George, I would I be out of order if I asked you if I could hear your Texan accent? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if I could go and spend a couple of months in Munich, I'd learn to talk Texas or anything else you wanted. That's a wonderful country. And uh, thanks for using New York, and we hope you have a lot of fun and a very successful Proud picture. to see you. Proud to meet you. Glad to have you all here with us, sir. Considering the uh, tricks we've pulled, you've done rather well so far tonight, panel, and we'll have another contestant after this word. And now a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Richard Choi. Right, sir? Mr. Choi, where are you from? Seoul, Korea. From Korea? Yes. And are you working there now, or are you living in the United States? Living here. You're living here yes. in the United States now. Well, it's nice to have you with us. Mr. Choi, may I present the panel? Will you join me over here, sir, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, 
Colonel, we can tell you that Mr. Choi is self-employed and deals in a product. And let's begin the festivities with uh, Larry Blight. Mr. Choi, uh, is this product useful rather than a uh, luxury item? No. No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Knickerbocker. Can uh, women use this luxury item? Yes. Is it a luxury item that's found in the house? Yes. Is it found in one particular section of the house more than another? No. Mm, uh, I wouldn't say so. I don't think that we could isolate it to the point that we could say you'd find it in one section of the house to the exclusion of any other section of the house. If you don't mind, Susie, I'll give you a note. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Choi, since John Daly didn't say so, I'll say it's a joy to have you on the program. With him. <laughs> and now we all understand why John Daly didn't say it, too. <laughs> Mr. Choi, is the, is the product with you connect with which you're connected ever worn as either adornment or clothing of some sort? Yes. Would it be very valuable? Give us a, a determination of value, Bennett. Well, might this, might this be in the jewelry or pearl neighborhood? No, it's no. not uh, in pearls, jewels or pearls. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Choi, when one wears this, is it seen? Yes. Uh, is it seen above the waist? Yes. Um, is it seen in the neighborhood of the neck? Yes. How big a neighborhood is your neck? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how big a neck you have. Great neck or little neck. <laughs> But, I mean, we would need to know, what, when you say neighborhood, uh, would you give us some idea of what you have in the mind? The shoulders. Just in the shoulders. That's the neighborhood No, I mean, would it be around, would it be seen around the shoulders? Thank you very it much. That's four be. down and six to go, Larry Blythe. Is this, in fact, an article of clothing? No. no. That's okay. five down and five to go, Miss Pickerbocker. Is this product worn on the head? You mean up here? Up here. Up mm -hmm. here, goodbye. That's six <laughs> down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Well, now, it is worn above the neck, though, is it yeah. not, Mr. Choi? Yes. Then it's worn somewhere around the face. Yes. Uh, is it worn above the mouth? Yes. <laughs> is it worn above the nose? Yes. Is it worn above the eye, uh, in, in, around the eyes or above the eyes? Yes. Well, that leaves the eyes and the forehead, doesn't it? It does indeed. Uh, is it uh, somewhere around the eyes? Yes. Ah. And it's, it's, um, is it, does it help uh, the eyesight of the person who is wearing it? Dum, de dum, dum. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. But it is definitely in the area of the eyes. Rather. That's, that's been decided. Now, is it all right if I rule out false eyelashes? No, it's not all right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Choi is the manufacturer of Richard lashes. Make the, makes only eyelashes, and he makes them in colors, which <laughs> is something to think about. And uh, they're made in Korea. He has a plant at home in which 200 people are employed. And, and uh, this is great, because it helps the economy and helps our ladies over here look handsomer. Thank you very much, Mr. Choi. Nice to have you. And so, once again, Susie, it's wonderful to have had you with us. And Thank Larry, you, too. John. Hope you had some fun. I told you it was going to be tough tonight. It was wonderful. And good night, Miss Eileen Francis. Thank you. Good night, Larry, and very good luck Tuesday night. Thank you very much. Good night, Susie. Good night, Larry, dear. Good night, Ben. Always like to have you on the show, Susie. Thank you. And you, too, you choyous fellow. <laughs> <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> <laughs> choyous. Fellow, really, two off one is not fair, Bennett. It's not fair. We don't have a chance to recover that way. But it's been nice having all of you here, and nice to have all of you with us. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Francis Gown is from Von McKellar. Tonight's program was pre-recorded.